After nine years of work, I was recently told, no, you can't be a citizen of our country, and all that effort went down the drain. Today, I'm going to tell you the country that doesn't want me to be their citizen and the lessons that you can take from that to avoid wasting years of time yourself. So way back in 2014, I started the process of trying to reconnect with people in my family through a process called Citizenship by Descent. It's a service that Nomad Calculus offers to people. We help people whose parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and sometimes even further, hailed from mostly countries in Europe, occasionally Latin America and the Caribbean. You can go and reconnect with that family, and as long as certain conditions are met, you can get the citizenship that should have been passed down all the way through the generations, and then you can keep passing that citizenship down multiple generations in the future. And so for countries in the European Union, it's a great way to get Polish citizenship and then spend as long as you want in Spain, or you know, get Irish citizenship and live in Portugal. You have the ability, much like a US state, to move to other countries within Europe. They offer tax benefits. Some offer more freedom than others. You can send your kids to school. There's a lot of benefits for citizenship by descent. And so my family, I have ancestors on my mother's side from Norway, that's a no-go. Basically, if your parents aren't from there, forget it, and they only recently allowed dual citizenship. On my father's side, ancestry from Germany, Wales, Scotland, okay, that's basically, again, one generation, maybe two in some cases. Like many people born in the United States, I am way back on those. The one that came from my mother's side that had some potential was Lithuania. And so Lithuania has uh, more restrictions than most countries on dual citizenship. They're talking now about easing those uh, to where certain Western countries can be dual citizens Lith with Lithuania. Obviously, the big issue has been, hey, we don't want people with loyalties split between Lithuania and Russia. If you go there, you know, even, 10, even 2014, people would say, hey, we understand the threat. However, there are some cases by descent when you can actually be a dual citizen if certain conditions are met. And so, in 2014, February, I got on a plane and I went and spent a month in Vilnius. And I basically saw that entire region, met a lot of interesting people, including some people that are in our network. And I started the process of trying to track down some of the documents because in the United States, uh, where I'm from, where my grandfather was born, we couldn't really find the documents. I said, listen, I want to go to Lithuania anyway, right? And so I'm going to go and try and figure stuff out. Nothing really happened there. And I kind of put the process on hold for a little bit. In 2016, through our network, I found a firm that we now work with for a handful of Lithuanian cases who said, okay, listen, this sounds potentially promising. Uh, this is interesting. We're going to start working on it. In the same year, uh, I went back and I was in Riga, Latvia, working with a bank. Don't recommend Latvian banks, by the way. Uh, but I met a Latvian lawyer who said, oh, well, you were talking to me about this back like a year ago. Your ancestors, even though they were purportedly Lithuanian, it seems they got married in Latvia. Let's see if there's an argument to be made that they could be either from Latvia or why did they get married in Latvia or actually Latvia, or is there some claim that ultimately went nowhere. Uh, but it's a, a reminder that if you have people, for example, my grandmother remarried a gentleman from what was then Czechoslovakia. He was Czech. And so in some of those cases where, you know, you're on the border somewhere, there may actually be a case to go, you know, in one direction or the other. You may think someone's Czech. Maybe they're actually, you know, qualifying for Slovak. But that process for me shut down. The process on the firm, you know, looking for my records continued. I put an assistant on it. We worked on it. Ultimately, we couldn't gather the right documents. We couldn't make the case, kind of put a hold on it. Eventually got Jovana Voinovich, who's our research and development head. She's the one who travels all over the world and interviews people and puts people through the ringer if they want to be the lawyers, be the accountants, be the professionals that work with us and, and that serve our clients because we are the bridge that connects people and creates their holistic plan. Uh, she got in the case around 2020 and finally was able through a lot of intuitive cold calling to track down some people that I had missed in the United States. Uh, Gary, Indiana, for example, where my grandfather was born, God rest his soul. They were able to call the right people and get a document that we hadn't found before. They started calling around to various churches. Finally, we got the right documents. But then it turns out we were missing something that proved that my grandfather was Lithuanian. And my answer was, well, in the United States, I mean, if you're born in the United States, you are American. Some people may not like that that's the case. But if you're born in the U.S., you're an American, and they don't really, yes, people talk about, you know, where they're from, what's their ancestry, but it's not really uh, documented anywhere. <laughs> you're American, right? You're American, I'm American, as people say. We finally were able to track down some document that said, I don't know where it was, but that his parents were 
Lithuavian. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, these people in, you know, 1927 or something. Like, guy, bloody hell. I'm never, they're going to say that one letter. Was, we don't know where, where Lithuavia is. We're Lithuania. We don't understand. It turned out that, that wasn't the issue. But we finally gathered a couple of documents between 2020 and 2021 that uh, proved it. And it said, hey, here's what it is that you're looking for. Went down uh, with one of our professionals down the road of, hey, let's go and see if this will work. Ultimately came back last year and then confirmed it again this year. Yeah, you know what? Here's what happened. Forget these years, your great grandparents did two things wrong. Number one, they left two years too early because Lithuania wasn't even a thing back then. And the other problem, and I even hate to kind of write this, oh, they were Jews, we think. And so like that doesn't meet a certain ethnic standard. And so those were uh, the two issues that uh, they had. By the way, never knew that. Um, but that was the thing. And so that's the no-go. Uh, there were some criteria, hey, if people left due to political persecution, that's one of the ways, hey, we give you a bit more flexibility. Uh, but one of the issues that trips a lot of people up when it comes to getting citizenship by descent is people left before the country existed. Hey, it wasn't Italy back then, right? Or there was not an unbroken chain. So in my case, the chain uh, wasn't broken. Um, now, a lot of you know, countries didn't really allow dual citizenship back in much of the 20th century. Uh, but my grandparents, or my grandfather, would have been born. His parents, uh, it appears at the time, were still Lithuanian, so therefore he could have gotten it. Uh, yes, the dual citizenship wouldn't really apply, but okay. That then would pass down the next, like nobody got rid of it. And that's what trips up some people like with, with Italy, for example, where somebody naturalized before they gave birth, and by naturalizing back then, dual citizenship wasn't, didn't really exist to the same extent it does today, and so they gave up Italian or gave up whatever, and now they can't pass it along to the next generation. That was not the case for me, but they left too early uh, before uh, all of this uh, happened. And so this you know, was a little frustrating for me for the reason that as I get older, uh, and as I've been doing this international stuff for a lot of years now, I, uh, I look at the opportunity of citizenship by descent from a, from a tactical view as not the only thing that you want. And that is a challenge with any citizenship by descent where dual citizenship is, is restrictive. There was a time when I was working way back, I erased it, but in uh, 2014, I did get a call, uh, no, 20, uh, 2015, got a call, I was in Mexico, putting together one of our conferences. And they said, hey, uh, there's a possibility this can work. Are you willing to give up US citizenship? And I'm like, yeah, I, I would do that. The issue in some of those cases is they're like, we'll give it up and then we'll give it to you. And it's like, well, you have this kind of period of weirdness in the middle or statelessness, what have you. And you're like, you promise you'll give it to me if I do this? But like, yes, I would be willing to do that because a Lithuanian or any EU passport is, is as good for travel as, as an American passport, even better ostensibly. You have more places you can choose to live. And um, in many cases, people who do that, if they do renounce the US, they do come back on what's called ESTA and they do visit the United States. So it's not like you're really giving up much passport power the way you would give up if you got a Caribbean citizenship. Um, so that was an issue. But if you're allowed to have dual citizenship, I would say, hey, be American, be Canadian, be Australian, be whatever you are. Those are the people that we help get citizenship by descent. Get your European citizenship by descent. And from a tactical position, you may want one or two extra passports because you kind of have the same passport, right? You have a Western passport. Okay, Lithuania is maybe a little bit different, but you know, any country that's like in NATO or whatever you want to say, like those are kind of allied passports and they may follow the same kind of geopolitical or financial or tax or whatever pattern. Have something else that's a little bit different. But as I get older, uh, I increasingly say to myself, you know, it'd be nice to have some identity. We're filming this in Pride Month, and whether you like that or not, I mean, you cannot deny people are talking about, hey, I want to identify how I want to identify about. For me, I never wanted to identify as American. It was not just, hey, I don't like American taxes. Yes, I do think they're too high. I did not want to identify as American. And so, I thought, hey, it'd be pretty cool if I could be Norwegian, can't, um, 
I mean, Welsh, it's not really a Welsh passport, it's a UK passport, it's Scottish, same kind of thing, unless they ever declare independence. Germany, okay, I mean, that's a little bit, you know, less interesting to me, perhaps. But I thought, okay, like Lithuanian, that's an interesting identity, and I would take that on, and I would proudly, you know, be Lithuanian. And I think that for a lot of people, it's worth claiming citizenship by descent for that reason. That is the reason why uh, Nomad Capitalist said, if that's all you want to do is get your citizenship by descent, we will do that. Now, if you have questions about, okay, how do I use that to open a bank account, and how do I lower my taxes, and how do I move my company overseas, and how do I do all that, we have a holistic plan, and that costs more money. But if all you want to do is say, hey, you know what, I would love to reconnect with my ancestors and make part of my identity, whether you, maybe you like being American, and you're happy to keep that part, and you just want to add a part, or maybe you don't like being American, or Canadian, or whatever you are, and you want to just, just be this new thing, I, um, have a newfound appreciation uh, that I kind of felt back, you know, in 2014 when I was really, I convinced myself it was all about tactics, but deep down it was like, hey, I'd like to, to have some uh, sense of home and some connection with the place where I, you know, with the people that I came from. Where were they from? Like, I'd like to reconnect with that. Um, and so I think that that is a reason to pursue citizenship by descent. It's why we offer it as a standalone service because there's a great feeling you get when you get a second passport. I can tell you the first time you hold that second passport, you're like, I have more options than most people do. But there's, I think, an, I would imagine an extra sentiment from, oh my goodness, like this is what my great grandparents had. And there's a reconnection there that I think is worth it. From a tactical, you know, tax freedom, everything else point of view, again, maybe you augment that with some other weird passport somewhere else, but I think it's important. So. Uh, if you want to reconnect with your family, you go to nomadcapitalist.com and you can actually download, we put together a PDF uh, about many of the options and about what the process looks like. Because I can tell you, there are some people, if it's just your parents, that's not going to be that difficult. Um, if you have all the documents, it may not be that difficult. But many people don't realize how many things you have to collect from around the world that sometimes it means you've got to like shake the cage a little bit. You've got to do some cold calls. We do that for folks with citizenship by descent. And if you say, hey, I want my citizenship by descent to then help me lower my taxes, open other bank accounts, diversify my investments, we can help you do that as well. We've helped people get 28 different citizenships, many of them by descent. If you don't qualify by descent, as I ultimately didn't, I did not stop myself from becoming a multiple citizen over the years. I got citizenships through other ways, by living overseas, by investment. Um, and so we help people with all of those. So I didn't wait in those nine years because I would have had a lot of my plans stymied if I was just sitting around waiting for Lithuania. I went on getting other citizenships. But if at the end of that pot, they would have said, hey, here's your Lithuanian. Even if I had to say, hey, I'll get rid of this one to be Lithuanian, I would have done that deal for the reconnection. Uh, but that's what Nomad Capitalist helps people do. So go to nomadcapitalist.com. You can download our PDF on uh, how citizenship by descent works, how we can help you. And if there's more to it than just getting that citizenship, you'll learn about how we can help you do that as well. Uh, but realize some people have an easy time and some of us have a really hard time. There's a tactical side and there's the personal side. I think you probably want someone who understands both.